Welcome back. This is Dan and Anthony with the Pregame Network podcast. Uh, it's been, we took a week break, right? It's been, it was one week or was it a week and a half? It was only one week. Uh, I mean, really? It, felt, it feels like longer. It was, it was just because the, the, the lead up to it was a little dragged out and we are a day late in our recording. So that day, it uh, ends. Oh, you know? uh, yeah, it's Friday. Okay. Yes, it is. Um, but we're back. Fret yeah. Not. Uh, <laughs> Things happen. Um, I haven't been playing that many things over the last month for reasons that are privy to you. Um, mm-hmm. But that's over now, at least for the time being. So I'll be able to get a little bit more gaming in uh, in, the, in the near future. I'm going to assume that what little time you had was put into Destiny. Am I correct? Um, actually, no. Wow, amazing. Yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll get to that. But actually, I, I have not been, like, no-lifing Destiny in the limited time that I've had to game. So I know that was, like, probably a shock to you. <laughs> so <laughs> I am. I'll put I the am a little later away. Not not only is it <laughs> shocking, but, like, there's, like, a, there's a smile on my face. I'm like, oh, my God, he wasn't completely uh, enslaved to the fucking Jesus game. Jesus fucking Christ. Look, uh, look, I, I, I told you that I beat the raid and I got the jacket, right? Did, did I did I tell you that, or was that somebody you else? You mentioned, but I think it wasn't okay, correct. I, I told I my brother I overheard you telling I, someone. Yeah. I, uh, well, after I beat the raid and got the jacket, like, I chased down a couple weapons that I wanted, and then after that, there was really... There, there, it's not like there was nothing really to chase, but like the the crown jewel of what I wanted out of Destiny, I got. So like I was able Excellent. to put it down for a while and focus on on the course that I was taking. So I, I didn't really jump back in with like head first like I would have done. Like I got, okay. I beat the raid, I got the jacket, and I kind of there are other things out there that like I wanted to try. So I I put Destiny down for a bit and then use my my limited time to do other things. So oh. I'll get to like what I've been playing, but let, let's I want to hear hear from okay. you first. Um, I mean, in the last two weeks, obviously I've been I've still been putting some time into the Callisto Protocol. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't beaten it yet. I'm getting close. Uh, the thing is, like like I kind of mentioned, is a lot of the I don't want to say issues, but a lot of the design flaws have kind of like you know it, it makes you hit like a wall almost. So mm-hmm. I, I haven't been putting as much time as I would just because it, it's not frustrating, but it's just like I'm just banging my head against the wall at a certain point, and it's not like a matter of skill, but like an issue of like the, the how the game is built and what it's doing to me. Um, so okay. uh, I mean, I'll, I'll get, I'll finish it. It'll probably be done by the next time we we chat. But uh, other than mm-hmm. that. Obviously, I have a rotation of fighting games. I went back and played some of the older uh, Marvel vs. Capcom stuff, like the old stuff. Like, before Marvel vs. Capcom, there's Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, and before that, it's X-Men vs. like, the old, old stuff for some stuff I'm working mm-hmm. on, including something that's uploading right now. Um, okay. Uh, other than that, uh, for a very obvious reason, I, ha- I also went back and started a playthrough of Dead Rising. Um, oh, boy. For, oh, wait, for, with the... Uh, for, the, the, the yeah, well... Yeah, which we'll we'll talk about a little bit later, but I've also been playing Dead Rising. Um every time I see DRDR, I just think of uh it's one of two things. It's either Dance Dance Revolution or it's uh that the song Doctor Doctor Give Me the News. I, oh, I don't remember yeah. who it's by. <laughs> I, but like they chose that fucking acronym for Dead Rising Deluxe Remix. Deluxe Remastered. The Deluxe Remastered, yeah. yeah. And they just abbreviated DRDR. I'm like, that's just a stupid name. <laughs> yeah, all the all the people who are like, you know, super like not just the ones that are critiquing it, like I have critiques about it, but the people who are just like everything sucks, not just like things <laughs> that suck suck, are like they're calling it dur dur like that's that's the fucking <laughs> But yeah, so I've been that's I've funny. been yeah, I've been playing mostly, you know, the same thing, the cabal of fighting games. The only major change, and this is something that uh, I've, I've been playing it with Joe, actually. I wasn't intentional, I wasn't intending on getting it, but it was actually gifted to me from a mutual friend of ours. Um, okay. I've been playing the latest expansion to Final Fantasy XIV. Okay. Um, and it's, and how it's, that forward, it's, it's, it's tough because the previous expansion... Was like you, you know how you're playing? What I've already forgotten. Was it the Final Shape? Right, yeah. that's the latest Destiny. Like imagine you remember the name. 
I, I get it. I get it mixed up because I wanted to say something else entirely. But anyway, so like you're playing the final shape right now, right? That's like the big cap. I'm, to I'm like, on and off. Yeah. But, no, yes. no, but the, the whole point that is where destiny is. And that when you go to play, it, you are yeah. in the midst of the final shape. You recently completed yeah. the campaign, the expansion prior to the current one. The current one is called Dawn Trail. The one previously was Endwalker. Endwalker was the end of the last 10 years of Final Fantasy 14. So it's 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 hard to stick the landing after that. It's like you just got done, you know, closing up so many, you know, tying up certain story bits, doing this epic grand adventure and now it's like I don't know, it's I I'm not the kind of guy that gets picky about like, oh, you know, smaller stories. I like that. That's fine. But it's not really story-wise delivering what I wanted from it. Um okay. The gameplay, however, is stellar. A lot of the dungeon designs have been lacking in recent years, and the, the what kind the of gameplay is it? Is it turn-based still? So it's it's like World of Warcraft, but it's built a different oh. way. So, I, okay. but I that doesn't do it justice, um, because like there it's they play similarly in the aspect where they're both tab-based combat, where you're d doing different targets and casting different spells and shit like that, but the way that it handles and what you're expected to do in it is a little different where it's it's okay. less of an rpg and more of like a turn-based thing and there's also an emphasis on um learning patterns and dodging things joe would joe would have, would be able if he was here he would be able to um give a better more apt description of it but the way that it handles boss battles is actually a huge draw for me it's one of the reasons i come back aside from occasionally oh, enjoying the story it's like for a game to have a gameplay hook that's going to bring you like if you play a game and then you leave mm -hmm. for an extended period of time and then if you come back just for like a specific mechanic or or a system like i i have to hear this well so it's not it's not like i, I make it out to it's like a personal preface thing uh basically how bosses are handled they're called trials and it's basically yeah this huge boss m multiple different phases and what the boss does, it's like different moves, obviously, but like Joe describes it almost like learning a dance because okay. like basically like the boss will have like a handful of different things it can cast or different attacks it can do that are, you know, kind of like middling, but they're basic, like, you know, ones that take up half the arena or do a cone in front of him or like slowly rains down. But the more extravagant stuff is like it's almost like a puzzle that you got to learn at first and it's it's interesting to me and it's all wrapped up it in like sounds like a like a destiny race yeah <laughs> i mean a lot of it sound like a lot of mmos are like that after after we're done i'll, I'll send you one of the soundtrack videos i did because like you'll see what's going on in the background okay. during the during the fight set. but basically is like you know you have the typical tab based combat but like it the payoffs are really fun dungeons and really fun bosses and okay. I could dig it's, that yeah and it's normally accompanied by really really good music which is like my hook is the boss battles the music and the story and it nailed half the music it nailed <laughs> pretty much all the gameplay and the story is just not doing it for me. Like I was expecting, like <laughs> new world adventures and fucking like you know, the, like it's played off as like a summer vacation in all the trailers. And I don't mean <laughs> that as in like rela literally relaxing, but it's supposed to be like different paced. You know, the the world isn't ending anymore and shit. Like you're just off adventuring. And instead, mm -hmm. I'm getting caught up in so, in like some new world politics with this chick I don't like. So it's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and her voice is so terrible. The voice of this character is so terrible that it I've switched from English to Japanese for the first time in ten years of playing the game. So it's like oh, all right. Yeah. Um that's, right, that's well, I think we're getting doing. a little bit off topic. Yeah, I, I, okay, I, so could, like I could, that, I that's it. That's, yeah. your... that, that's that's what I've been doing. Okay, all right, fair. All right, yeah. So I'll go and then we'll talk about yeah, other stuff. Go for it. Yeah. Um so I mean I I have dipped a toe into Destiny, sure. Like that I don't think that game is going anywhere for me. Um and I'm I'm trying to see like where they're trying to take their new seasonal model or their, their episodic model because you know obviously the final shape is came and went and it wrapped up the story in a very satisfactory way. I think I went over that last episode. Uh, but now it's over and like, you know, I, I don't really know what else to do if I'm not raiding with mm -hmm. my clan. So I yeah. when I'm when they're not on and I'm not looking to like 
get all the raid gear. I'm not really playing that much. Um, mm -hmm. I did go back to Darktide in like a pretty solid capacity. Like the other night I played for like two and a half hours, just like solo queuing by myself okay. on Darktide. I just, it's, the Darktide moment to moment gameplay is like, is so good for me that mm -hmm. that's one of the very few games that like i'll just play it just because i like to play it it's just fucking fun i mean um, I, every time <clears> i've played it with you i've enjoyed it it's not it's not a bad game yeah. by any stretch of the imagination yeah it's really really good and it's only a matter of time before their their content offering is going to rival that of what vermintide 2 now mm -hmm. has because vermintide 2 has been out for like six or seven years something like that and yeah. they just keep getting updates they just keep I mean, getting new shit <laughs> yeah, the the pace of updates and the amount of content, it, it seems like they learned a lot from Vermentide, or at the very least, they know not to do it at that pace, at that speed. They're definitely going a lot f quicker. Yeah. Um, so I think that Darktide is going to get a very similar cadence as far as content updates and quality of life patches and, and you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, mm -hmm. But the... The most recent update that they did, Secrets of the Machine God, um, that was announced during, I think, like the trailer fest like a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it, so it finally hit and it came with a new map and a handful of new weapons. And the the new sawed off shotgun for all the classes except for the Ogren is just so fucking good. It's like the Doom super shotgun, but in mm -hmm. Warhammer. And it functions basically the same way. Um, it, so like I've just been having a lot of fun with it, and I, mm. I it, yeah, I, I just it's it's really really good. Um, and they also announced their new um, crafting system, like the crafting overhaul that they. I've been talking about this for a while because like the crafting system in this game has just been ass since the beginning, but <laughs> they finally. <laughs> it's true. That's one way. I mean, finally, that's one way to put it. Yeah, I mean, I guess this kind of goes into like the news story that I wanted to get into, but whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, they finally gave us like a sneak peek at the of what the rework is looking like and it's basically um oh you like this weapon use this weapon level it up you'll unlock the perks as you level it up and you can apply it for different current like it's just the uh, the way that it should have been from the get-go um okay and which is great because like there's a bunch of weapons in that game that feel great to use and but I just I don't have I have no agency over what perks I get on them, what stats they get like and this it's all RNG which is insanely frustrating. So now I'll be able to target farm like specific not tar not target farm but like level up a weapon enough to get what I want on it. Um, and then they, you know they they added like their battle pass system which isn't a battle pass because you don't pay for it. It's just a part of the 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 reward progression throughout the the game i don't think they have like a I, I don't know if it's contained within a season because you just earn penances and the higher your penance score goes up the more cosmetic rewards that you get which is like i said a few episodes ago that's exactly what i wanted out of the game like i just mm -hmm. want a way to earn cool cosmetic stuff to show that like i beat this hard mission um yeah so dark tide is doing everything that i've wanted it to do since the beginning which is which is great so like i think only positive things are coming down the down the line. Um, so that that that's one thing that I've gone back to. Uh, Dark Tide has been really really fun for me. And then I just got uh, Returnal. Do you, you've heard of that game? I am aware of it. Isn't it's like a third person shooter roguelite, roguelike. Yeah, that's exactly thing. what it is. But it was, they it think was it's a... very it's a very pretty game. Yeah, it was it was one of the PlayStation Five launch titles, wasn't it? Yeah, it was something like that, um, and then early. they ported it to PC. So mm -hmm. that guy, that went on like a deep, deep sale for the Steam Summer Sale. So I, I scooped oh, okay. that up for really cheap, and I was playing it a little bit today, and it's 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 really good. I've heard nothing but good things about it since it came out. So I finally picked it up and started playing it, and it's 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 a lot of fun. It's it's really okay. good. I, I'm not too big into roguelikes, but <coughs> I feel like I can get lost in this one just because of the gameplay. So. Yeah, I mean, I when, when you think when you think road lights or road likes, uh, typically, typically speaking, like they're done top down, they're isometric, or they're uh, mm -hmm. they're uh, like no, it's uh, just a third person shooter. 
<laughs> no, I know that. I'm saying, I'm saying in general, that's what you think. No, I know. Which is why I, this one yeah. is more enthralling to you is because yes. you know, the gameplay. It's it's the same thing when um I haven't played it because I don't have Ragnarok, but when Ragnarok added that mode Valhalla, which is essentially mm-hmm. a roguelite mode. That's yeah. my understanding of the mode. So it's yeah, like, they advertised it as such. Yeah. yeah. So that would you know, you know that's that's going to be more appealing than you know a top down to you know you because that's yeah, I'm not really interested in like the. I, I still I haven't played Ragnarok yet because I don't have a PlayStation, but th- it, mm-hmm. it's coming to PC I think sometime in the fall. So when that comes out, I'm I'm 100% scooping that up. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I I really have no interest in the roguelite uh, uh, game mode. Like it, it yeah. just I'm if I'm gonna play God of War, it's gonna be for the story. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, like I, you know whatever. I mean it's a free update, great, it's there. But I'm not gonna go out of my way to play it. Um, I gotcha. And the only other thing I've been playing is the first Ascendant, which I do have some thoughts on. We can get into that, but yeah, sure. Uh, it's uh, I mean, you want to just rip, tear into it now, or you want I mean, you want to talk about I, something else? I mean, considering it's something you've been playing, you may as well, uh, unless you've got something else that you've been playing besides that that you want to cover first. No, just about those three. I mean, it's it's pretty fresh in my mind. Like it's it's your run of the mill looter, like live service looter shooter. Like I can't, I don't think it particularly excels in any one area. Which mm-hmm. is probably the worst on a live service looter can have, in my opinion. Like for me, Destiny Two has some of the best gunplay mechanics in gaming, right? I know we disagree on that, but just setting that aside, like <laughs> I just seriously, like just setting that aside, I think that Destiny Two, like it feels really, really, really good to play. Um, as far as a third person shooter goes the first ascendant is not doing anything special i think the powers are cool i like all the progression systems in the game but all the progression systems come from other games like the mastery system is basically warframe um Mm. the mod system for weapons is is just like fucking plagiarized warframe um (laughs) uh the the hub world reminds me exactly exactly of the destiny 2 tower Mm. um like there's it's just an amalgamation of of different looter shooter elements all mashed up into one under mm-hmm. the Nexon banner. And the the so Joe was not kidding about this. The monetization <laughs> is aggressive as oh, yeah. fuck. It's yeah. like real bad. And <laughs> I haven't put a dime heard. into it yet. Um it I think I have to see how much I actually play it before I decide to spend any money on it. Mm-hmm. Um but the the monetization in the last in the first fuck last ascendant first ascendant ascendant. (laughs) the monetization (laughs) in the first ascendant is like really bad like to get the ultimate um descendant for i think that it's the bunny character Mm -hmm. it's like a hundred dollars like it's just it's outrageous i I don't know any person in their right mind that has a normal job would spend a hundred dollars on an ultimate skin like that I mean, I look at it this way because, I mean, I haven't played it yet. I have it downloaded because I've had multiple people ask me to, to play it. And my, my take on it is this, like, one, I want to try it because, like, I I just, I want to play, like, a shooter like that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but, like, I look at it and it's like, okay, it's Nexon. Obviously, they're going to they're gonna try and milk you dry with the cash shop. That's something that we knew going in. Joe was an expert. And he kind of schooled us again on it. But it's obvious yeah. something that's obvious when you see the Nexon It's thing. not that I didn't believe him. I just th- no, no. I thought that he it's, was he was looking at it through, like, shit-tinted glasses. No, no. It's, it's Nexon will always get there one way or another. That's just, that's okay. how they've always been. <laughs> that's how they've always been. But, like, I look at it like... Like, even if it's, like, I try it and I play it and it's just, like, it's that egregious where I put it back down, right? And, like, mm. I I enjoy the fact that there's an option out there compared to games of that style, you know, that are, nece- like, it's like, yeah, you know, I, I hate Nexon and what they're doing, but I also hate a lot of the developers of these other games. But at least the, the Nexon offering isn't egregiously ugly and it's free to play if I if I wanted to. You yeah, know, that's probably the it. strongest thing. The, probably the strongest thing that that game has going for it is that it is mm-hmm. free to play and it is cross play so you can play with your friends on any platform it really doesn't matter which mm-hmm. is a big big pro in my book also yeah. um and i mean it's it's fine like it's not ex- like i said it's not ex- uh, excelling in any in any one area mm-hmm. um 
if you just want to turn your brain off and shoot something and just have a decently good time like this game does that it's yeah. you're not gonna like i have almost 2000 hours in destiny over the course of eight years now something like mm-hmm. that or nine years um and that's De- no this is destiny 2 i'm talking about mm-hmm. i probably have more overall but in destiny 2 i have on pc at least i have 2400 uh no 1200 hours that's just on pc so it's probably another 800 on console before i made the switch um you know mm-hmm. i don't see myself getting anywhere close to that number with the first well, my, well i look at it i look at it this way like we're not we've talked ad nauseum about the industry. We're not in a position where a contender to like rival your sunk cost into destiny Mm. is going to show up. Like what you said is pretty, is pretty adequate to, or pretty, pretty, it's pretty accurate to what I had seen of it so far in that it's like, it's average in all aspects. But what, what stands out to me is like average in all aspects doesn't happen that often. You know, there's normally like a hang up, where it's like the yeah, game, the, the point. The, yeah, like oh, the gameplay isn't all that great, even though the systems are good, or oh, the systems suck, or oh, you know, this game kind of plays great, but everything about it is ugly, or there's performance issues. But average across the board isn't terrible, you know. It's yeah, it's just it's, it's all it's, the whole thing yeah. of like great is the enemy of good, or something mm-hmm. like that. You've, you've I, heard of that saying before? I've, I've heard it. I, I don't know if it's that exactly, but I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, or perfect is the is the enemy of good. Something along those lines. So, something along, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's not, it, you know, shockingly, it's aside from like the day one server issues, which is just kind of to be expected at this point for a live service game. Mm. Um, I have not had any technical issues with it, so that I feel like is I a mean, pretty it's... decent. Pro. It's been in development for a while, hasn't it? Because I feel like I've been hearing about this game I, I don't for know. Like, in the, like I feel like when I when I when I think of the first Ascent, it could just be that all the shit is blurring together. But I think of Helldivers two and Stellar Blade because I think they were announced in the same time frame. You know? Okay. Like that's 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 what comes to mind when I when I think of that. So I mean, I could be wrong. It could just be that all this is blurring seeing... together. But I've I've seen this for a while. I feel. I remember seeing like really early trailer footage for uh, the first Descendant, like mm-hmm. maybe over a year ago, which means that they've been working on it for like at least three. Um, and so it's probably somewhere in that ballpark, but it's. I feel like the game could have much higher praise if, if they took the Warframe approach, where like you really can earn anything that you can pay for with just time played. But they lean so fucking hard into, like, you either have to no life grind or you have to shell out ridiculous sums of money to get mm-hmm. what you want. So well, that kind of sucks. I mean, I, I guess we're going to find out together when we try it. But I guess my yeah. main question is gameplay spread. Like, what what's available? Like, to like, so, you say, you, like, you say grind for hours and hours and hours on end. Like what's the gameplay compared to that? Like what's available for me to play to theoretically grind or just to play and earn over time. So I haven't put that much time into it yet. I think I'm not even through the main quest line for the game, but it seems like it's just a combination of go here, defend this point, like deliver this bomb to the point or whatever it is. Um, Occasionally you'll go into a dungeon where you can uh, do a public matchmaking session and you have to it's like a strike like a destiny strike like you just make your way through the the dungeon and then when you get to the end you have to kill a boss and that's either you're doing that for a quest step or you're doing that um to earn like a specific item that you might need or like a crafting material or something but the game like i don't know how this is going to handle like real end game content like you know in destiny i would raid or in I don't even what you would. I don't even know what you would do in in Warframe or like Diablo. You have Hell Tides, uh, so I don't know where it stands uh, in that respect. But mm-hmm. I've just been running around doing like your standard standard missions. Now they do have like a boss arena type of mode where you can select what what big boss that you want to play, and it just teleports you to like an empty arena with other players or, or, or a private session. You can always do a private session. 
Um, but each boss has like you have to kill these specific bosses for certain crafting materials, or um, like a chance of getting X item so that you can turn around and craft this currency so that you can turn around and and research like another weapon or a descendant or, or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. That's as far as I've gotten. So like okay. the gameplay variety isn't isn't massive. Um, but I think where the real strong suit of it lies is the abilities for the characters. Like the gunplay is nothing to write home about. It, it, it's mm -hmm. it's way worse than like the Division Two. Um, okay. Well, I, I, like I said, I, I'm judging. I'm like, I'm not saying like I, I'm gonna cut it slack if it's just if it's not necessarily good or if it's not you know better than what I've played in the past. But it's like if I if I'm like in a desert, right? <laughs> and I just I've, I haven't had water in a while, and somebody hands me a cup of water. I'm not going to complain that the water is warm, you know. <laughs> so like I'll take what I can get. Yeah. If it's serviceable, is all it needs to be. Because guess what? There's nothing out there as far as yeah. like that particular niche well, as, of third person. That was shooter. something that I thought of when I was playing because like you've been going on for basically months now that there's no <laughs> really good third person shooter out there, yeah. and like this game isn't bad. It's just not great. So I think you'll still have fun with it, and then you can yeah. lean into whatever playstyle that you like, depending on what, whichever character that you choose. Like, I mm -hmm. picked the big tank guy. Um, okay. It's like bubble shields and slam attacks and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been leaning into that playstyle, but, mm -hmm. you know, I haven't gotten the opportunity to get another character yet because I think it, it just it gives you the bunny descendant off the bat and then you you have to go out of your way to like really grind and or pay for another descendant you want to play as so okay. i i don't know just how different the the move sets are but i do think that the strong suit of this game in particular are the abilities that you get okay. with the different characters so that is my yeah. uh empire state building elevator review <laughs> for the first ascendant <laughs> that's fair i mean i mean i haven't touched it yet you've barely touched it. i mean i'm we'll probably whether it's tonight or tomorrow we'll we'll try it and we'll we'll have more to say about it next week i'm sure mm -hmm. and yeah. hopefully joe will be there so he can when we bring up nexon or if we'll probably mention it, it'll be like nexon and it'll his like a little just, just fucking go off. glowy eyes triggered. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, so very very interested to try a third person shooter that exists with characters that are conventionally that attractive. That exists. What a fucking low bar. <laughs> I'll pick what I can get, man. Like I said, it may not rip you away from Destiny, but it might be good for a couple nights and you know, no, no, you know, skin off my bones for. Yeah, that's all I'm really looking at it as. Like it'll be fun in it for a couple nights with a group of friends, but no. I'm. This is not. This game is not here for our long haul. Yeah. So. Hmm. There's that. Yep. So what do, what uh, do you got this week? I mean, I've got a few stories. I'll just start with something small just because we haven't touched anything political yet. And I just feel like we're under quota. It's not really anything. It's not It's not really anything super political. I'm just, I'm, I'm mainly joking. Like I say political, but it's not really political. Like I'm not going to go into it. It's um, Square Enix had a shareholder meeting. Uh, you obviously know who Square Enix is. Yes, big, big Japanese company around for a while. A merger between uh, SquareSoft and Enix, you know. Final yeah. Fantasy. No, I, I know, I know. Yeah. Square, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. So uh, recently, they they recently pivoted and they did something that you know is kind of like a no brainer, but companies take a while to get there. Uh, they're doing they're shifting their strategy from quantity to quality, as they put it, right. <laughs> and and one of the uh, one of I'm the sorry, I don't mean to laugh. But, but no, I mean I, I, I feel like I've heard this before. Sh it shouldn't need to be said, and it's just it's whatever. And one of the shareholders said something interesting, where he basically said that you know he's like, oh, you know, I, he he said what we what we are thinking, which is like, oh, good, switching from. I'm very happy to hear about this quantity to quality shift. And then he said, I'm also interested and kind of worried about our relations with the company Sweet Baby Inc. And he's like, he oh, would like, God. he's he's curious to know what kind of transactions have gone on between the two. So I'm like, yeah, <laughs> the companies are starting to notice. That's really the only thing I had to say about that because I, you know, it's I just well, find it funny that like... Is better than no traction. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you just keep mentioning things, people start to hear about it. And, you know, regardless of whether this goes anywhere or not, the whole point is, you know, you can't let them just operate with impunity. So just, I, I found mm -hmm. that funny that uh, an investor, a shareholder said this during like a review you know so i just i thought that yeah. was funny yeah definitely good mm -hmm. 
Um, all right, what else you got? Mm. Uh, I got a few small stories, but I mean, let me let me. Uh, I, I recently heard something going on with uh, uh, the future of Halo. Um, okay. And I wanted to see if you knew anything I have about not this. Heard this. No. So basically, <laughs> so basically, it's it's not not an announcement or anything like that, but that basically. The studio, 343, got a new uh, lead designer for future projects. Um, I, his name is Dan Gennady. G-N-I-A-D-Y. Say that again? Dan Gennady. Oh, Gennady? okay. All right. I don't know if you've okay. heard of him before. Have you ever heard of no, him? No. No. So, I, I thought there was a different first name. No. Uh, so the reason I, I, I said you might have heard of him is because... Uh, he two of the things that are that were highlighted as what he's worked on as a lead designer, or three things oh, I should boy. say, uh, Destiny one and two. So that's, okay. Yeah. You know, so you know, in some of the expansions, and the other thing, and it was a big red flag for me, was uh, hyenas. Do you even remember hyenas? That sounds. Wait, hold on. Before you tell me, was mm-hmm. it a hero shooter, like it a was. Ubisoft title? A project. It wasn't. It wasn't a Ubisoft title. It was a Creative Assembly with Sega as like the producer. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, it, was yeah. it was like that. that it was funky, like military esque. Uh, it was. It was like. It was like oh, edgy it so street. Familiar. It was like street yeah, edgy. Yeah. It had that really yeah. cringy video leak. That was the internal pitch. It was all pop culture references and like oh. we are we are the underdogs and shit like that. <laughs> uh, so I'm just like. I'm just like, listen, first of all, we shouldn't even be talking about a future Halo. Like I mentioned before, when Infinite finally is like in a good position now, we shouldn't be talking about like a Halo 7 or something. But like, if this is the guy, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, seriously, <laughs> like, what is this decision? It's just like, okay, oh, they're probably just like, oh, you you're, you worked on the Destiny games. You're good. But it's like, what's the latest thing you did? Oh, hyenas? Like, that's like a red flag. Like, they poured tons of money into speaking, hyenas and they canceled it speaking of like destiny 2 developers uh so i didn't know that it, you remember concord right from the sony state of oh, play yes i do so i mean you probably know where i'm going with this but th- there were destiny pvp developers that left and formed a new, a new <laughs> studio something fire fire brand something like that mm-hmm. um they're the ones who made concord That's and funny. sony bought them before they released the game like that's, not, not just, like released that's, that's, a game <laughs> that's so amazing to me because like the one thing that people can agree on with destiny that i talk to is like like sometimes you know you'll have people at different points in the story where they say, "Oh, this is good, this is bad," but like almost consistently, everybody I talk to always say the PVP sucks. Okay, so, so hold on, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Let me at least set, yeah, put some context on that. Set me straight here. Yeah. So the PVP in and of itself, the it it doesn't. I don't think it's. I think that's an unfair assessment. Okay. Um, I think that. The progression systems around the PvP game mode, um, mixed with, like, I, I'm going to use the word neglect, mm-hmm. um, or perhaps aimlessness. That I think those two things are okay. a recipe for why people think that PvP sucks. Now, okay. I, I am of a slightly different opinion. I think there are way too many like one to two shot kill things in destiny to have a healthy Mm. pvp sandbox because i don't even care enough to go into pvp anymore to really give it the old college try like i am so beyond giving a shit that it it doesn't (laughs) even matter to me anymore um they would have to make like a really good weapon to to have uh like a really good weapon with a PVE application in order to make me dive into PVP to try to get it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so I don't think Destiny 2 PVP is bad from like a principal nature. Um, mm-hmm. I think that if they removed all of the powers from Destiny 2 and just had like a guns and grenades game mode, I think that would be way better. And I've been asking for this for a long time and apparently they are going to do that in they call it crucible labs it's like the beta version of like the new game mode that they're going to oh, put out okay so 
apparently it might have happened already but i've just been out of the loop for so long i didn't even notice but that is that was supposed to be what they were trying to do with destiny 2 pvp because it's like a it's like a universal understood thing that destiny pvp sucks ass and like only the sweats and the tryhards are are in now and i just i honestly don't think that is is any closer to the truth <laughs> um so I think that a group of developers leaving Bungie, a group of PvP developers specifically leaving Bungie to try their own thing is not a bad thing, but I don't think it needed to be a fucking hero shooter. And I also find it funny that they were snatched up by Sony. Like, yeah, kind of that, ironic that's, because that, that's they kind are. Of funny. Now they're coworkers with, coworkers with Bungie now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that so I, I don't know how I got on this tangent, but. Um, uh, I was talking yeah, about Concord. one of the guys. Concord, and... Did you see any of the Concord gameplay? Because they released a bunch. I have. You have? Yep. It looks like every other fucking hero shooter I've ever seen. Yeah. I am so lukewarm on that game. I don't. I just don't care. I just it's don't funny, care. It's funny to me because I said it to you or I said it to Joe and I said Concord looks like like it looks how I normally it's based describe off of that the, fucking cutscene I mean that's that's one thing like the tone and the finishing and the style and the target audience and the the the, the whole global standard sensibility nonsense that's just it's safe and easy and whatever that's one thing but the other thing is that like I was looking and I'm just like why does this look like I know you I know you disagree with me I'm not looking to start an argument with it but when I think destiny I think sluggish drowning in syrup yeah, no i know I, not I, fun. I think we just and, agree to disagree on this yeah point. but what i'm getting at with this is i look at concord and i see that exact like the the, the, the speed and the pace and everything is just, it's not it does not click for me it does not look appealing yeah. to me in the slightest i mean I, i'll be honest at least it's humorously bad because like i can't even write because xbox is putting out their their hero shooter like fra frag something is that what it is frag punk i've been seeing frag this around punk, a lot yes Yes, I, I keep wanting to say frag it, but that's obviously not correct. Fra <laughs> frag punk. Is, could you, is, could is, you imagine if they <laughs> named their game Frag It? <laughs> that would be that would be something else. But it's like but no, listen. Free you know marketing what? right here, Microsoft. Fra hire frag us. it. Frag it is like if you want if that's you want to like call it from it. now on. Yeah, <laughs> call it Frag It. No. Fra <laughs> I can barely remember that game sometimes because the logo, it doesn't read well, it's kind of dog shit, and it's like, it's a, I mean, it's got a better gimmick than Concord, I guess? But it's like, it's still another boring hero shooter, so, I, I mean, they both lose, but I guess Concord is slightly more memorable just because of how absurdly safe and terrible it is? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. I got nothing on that front also. Yeah. Like, I, like, if they... If it was put in front of me for free and I had nothing else to play, I would try it. If I, I had it like something a... else I was <laughs> marginally interested in, I probably would not. If I was alive and like just going about my business, I probably wouldn't try it. <laughs> I don't know. Man, if I'd I give was it, like... dead, then I wouldn't even need to worry about it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, what else you got for me, Dan? What else you got? Uh, what else? What else we got? Um... <sighs> Uh, let's see. What do I have on my what's new page on Steam? Mm -hmm. uh, nothing much, honestly. A bunch of maintenance and notice alerts for the first Descendant. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's um, the majority of the what's new tab. There's been there's been, there's been a lot of hubbub about physical games lately. Have you heard any of that? Mm, not particularly, no. There's, I've, there's I've kind of had my head in the sand for the last few fine. weeks. Uh, there's, it's two minor things. I mean, not. I don't want to say minor because it could have repercussions, but Sony announced that they're going to... Uh, certain sectors of their uh, business are going to shut down production on Blu-rays, which is kind of a big oh, really? deal because, you know, they, they, they own Blu-rays. <laughs> So yeah. it's like, you know... They're, 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 I wouldn't say they're winding down, but they're making moves to kind of pull back. In production mm -hmm. on physical media and on the flip side in, in if you go from you know i went to japan but sony is really a california company now um if you go over to europe uh the the, the leading retailer game 
Uh, they say that um, they're not going to be selling physical games anymore. Only pre-orders will will be eligible for physical uh, stock. Oh wow! Yeah, so it's going to okay. Be so dynamic. hold on, that actually gives credence to the to the um, the the idea of pre-orders, I guess, or like the the core principle of pre-orders because pre-ordering a game now means fucking nothing. Yeah, the, I remember the, the, back when we were growing up, like you had to pre-order something if you wanted your copy. Otherwise, there was not going to be enough. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, pre-orders. It's it's so tricky because pre-orders is another one of those topics where it's like I don't, I can't like have a normal conversation about it because the industry is in such is in such a state. But it's like pre-ordering a game, like it should be like it should lean into the aspect of celebrating the fact that a game exists, you know? It's like, mm, yeah. you're excited enough to put your money down however many days or weeks or months in advance, like, and it's just like, it's it's like, a, I don't want to say like a bonding thing, but it's like you're you're putting your excitement forward monetarily to these, these teams that are making these games, and it's like, like, I think about, like, when we used to pre-order and we used to go to midnight launches. It was always a big deal. We were always those, getting... Those were, like, some of my fondest memories. Oh, they're, like, th- they're, I, they're great. I fucking loved midnight releases of, like, like uh, Gears of War 2 and 3, Halo, mm-hmm. any COD game back when it was, like, they were actually innovating on the formula. Yeah. Um, there was, there was I, a I few mean, others in between. It. I think... Yeah, no, of course. Uh, yeah, there, there was like I think Mortal Kombat Nine and Portal Two came out on the same day, so they they were just doing a midnight for that and one other game. Like, there was, uh, I've been I've been to it. quite a yeah I've been to quite a few, but it's or I'm gonna look I'm gonna look up the release date for Portal Two and Mortal Kombat Nine, and they're gonna be nowhere fucking near each other. I don't know what they were selling <laughs> that night anymore, but I know Mortal Kombat Nine was there. Um, but like yeah. I I just like in an industry that is thriving. And driven by you know by people of merit and passion, they're like we've kind of like associated pre-ordering as like this dirty thing, and in a in a way it is, but it's like the aspect of it at it at its core of like a team making something that it, that they want to make the best way they can make it, and a, a well-minded, well-read consumer going out and saying that looks great, and I want to put my money towards it, and then in the middle you have bonuses for the for the for the customer and celebration you know, and events and shit like that i just feel like that that's that that's like a high society thing right <laughs> above all the all the muck and bullshit it's just i don't know like i like those are great it's just i don't know it i can't like it's just one of those things it's like okay. i can't talk about like i th- i think in my mind of all the different ways you can make pre-order incentives and make it worth it for everybody involved but it's just like we can barely make games right now. <laughs> so it's like, how the fuck am I going to sell? How the fuck am I going to sell pre-orders? You know, but it's like, but, can, but yeah, no, can it, barely but, make the fucking product, let alone exactly. get people excited enough to pay for it before it comes out. Exactly. But <laughs> oh to, to, to what you were saying, yes, it, it does. It does. That, that gives, you know, credence to pre-orders as a whole. The fact that like now, if you want it in the store, you got to pre-order it. And, I mean, it's better than most. I mean, most countries have terrible shipping. But that's or just artificially shipping. inflating the value of a pre-order. Oh, of <laughs> course, like, no. I have, fucking, I have no. <laughs> yeah, that's the no U.S. government injecting that. billions into the economy during the COVID <laughs> shutdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, oh my god. But yeah, that's uh, that's all that that you know. Just a couple things about um, uh. Uh, some physical media stuff going on like people people are always going to bring up the whole thing like yeah I, it's one of those many topics where it's just like i don't care if a bunch of people who are like you know they don't care about the games or the industry they just like i i put i play my game and it's yep. like a ma- it's just nothing but a madden or a shooter or a roguelike and that's all they play and they feel entitled to say about the industry like oh i don't need physical media why would you need physical media it's like no you gotta Physical media is well, like, something that shouldn't. It's go a double edged so. sword for me because I bolster my Steam library like it's my fucking job. Oh, but I, yeah. I, I do miss like going out and collecting a disc that I have to put into my Xbox. But that's yeah. not really a thing with PC anymore. But and I've almost entirely made the switch at this point. It's it's there's got to be a healthy uh, mix of both. I mean the the convenience of 
uh, of digital is obviously a big part of it, but it's just like I don't. Physical is just the way is just the way to go, I think. But that 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 leads into so many different things. It's it, it's, yeah. it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a it's a big topic, you know. It's a so different it's like, conversation entirely. Yeah. But um. <laughs> But yeah, that's all I got to say about it. With that, I don't want to. I don't want to sit here and ramble about like ah, uh, I want to shelf with all the games that I own because like a lot of people with it will go like to the absolute extremes where like you know it's like oh you don't really own it if it's digital and it's like I I have I have I can't like argue about it objectively you know because I think of mm-hmm. I think of like what I would do in that situation right like let's say I buy something digital for full price and. At some point in the next three to ten years, either the storefront goes away or the because, like, you don't technically own your games. It's just a license. Um, that goes away. And, like, I'm... And this is another thing that it's, like, it's not always the case, but it's, like, I'm never going to give that company money again, you know? Yeah. I'm never going to spend money. I'm, and if I need it again and they say, like, oh, well, the storefront's down you can't get it, I'm just going to take to the high seas and get myself a copy like i can't like if i want to play something i'm gonna go find a way to fucking yeah play i'm it. gonna fucking play it yeah like it's I'm almost like i don't want i don't high seas yeah i don't want to be i don't want to be like a dickhead and say like me giving you any money at all is is me like essentially tipping you but it's like it's, like if you don't if believe I, in uh, exactly so like if, if i get screwed <laughs> i have ways around it i don't know the, the point is physical games i just like physical games. like open the fucking yeah, no i'm with you i am yeah i am but it's just it's like i said it's, it's one of those things you can't really it, it's so hard to talk about because there are so many other issues that are around or attached to it you know mm-hmm. uh yeah i mean that, that might be a good topic for another pod is is like the argument for and against digital yeah i think media. I, th- I think that if in the future, like, big shifts happen or, like, new consoles come out and we stick with physical media, which I, I can't imagine them ditching, because, like, I think the uproar would just be too strong. Um, but I, I think... I think I, I, well, I mean, we'll, I, we'll, that we'll, would be another topic in, in that conversation. Exactly. We, we I, should that, do an episode saying. on that. Yeah, it, would, it wouldn't hurt to, to talk about that. Like, we'll, we'll put some notice, notes aside and do a whole conversation or not. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but, yeah, you know, that's, that's all I've got to say about that, really. Yeah. I, I don't really have much else. I think this is this might be it because I I don't know what's really been going on in my realm of gaming as of late. I mean, it'll be different next week because mm-hmm. I'm actually going to start paying more attention uh, now that I'm done with that course. But uh, uh, it's kind of a quiet week for me. I've got I've got a few small things just to you know pass by uh, that I found like not not world shattering or anything, but were kind of interesting. Um, uh, apparently, a report came out. AAA games are flopping on iOS oh, platforms. Oh, you don't fucking say. Yeah, no, but on iOS platforms in in particular, and I'm sitting there like these companies have the like they have a lot of gall, right? Like yeah. they're just like throwing like how long have we been we've been alive and like phone, mobile gaming has been like trying to like be a thing. Like I remember, like you would when we had the old podcast, you would always have your iPad. You'd be playing something like Dead Trigger or something, and it's like, oh yeah, that's right. And it's like it's just not like like if you design a game around it, that's fine. But it's just it is not an optimal platform for it's uh, it's it's just not. So all these games are are flopping. Like you're getting closer with like those those wireless controllers that you can attach mm -hmm. a phone into, um, but it's still not the same thing. It's just not. Yeah, I I just it, like I, I what were the numbers? It was it was I think it was Death Stranding, uh, Resident Evil Four Remake, and uh, one of the Assassin's, Creed, Assassin's games. Creed. Yeah, yeah, Assassin's Creed Mirage and something else. And they all like some of them were selling only sold like ten thousand copies. Some of them were yeah, selling under the people under who are 50, gonna 000. quote unquote game on mobile are like they're not gonna go out of their way to spend. I'm guessing it's like fifty bucks on these games. I mean, yeah, to, I mean, to they, play they, it on their phone. It's just that's not the demographic. Yeah, I just I, I think about it this way. It's like you, you hit the nail on the head with the demographic thing. Like I was kind of like what I was saying before. I'm just like it's just the kind of guy that goes that that would you know opine for digital or say like physical doesn't matter. Is that same kind of gamer that does, they don't want to sit down and play a, a Resident Evil on their fucking iPhone. Like yeah, it's not. I can't like happen. the market's just <laughs> not there. And it's funny because Capcom just keeps trying I, i'll actually use this to segue into something else because capcom did a little event where they talked about three games and one of them they're like big thing they interrupted one of their like 
like halfway through they were talking about Dead Rising and halfway through it they stopped to mention that Resident Evil 7 was coming to the iPhone and I'm sitting there looking <laughs> at this thing and they're like we spent a lot of time tuning up the touch controls and like I'm just sitting there imagining playing on like a nine inch screen and that's being Ooh, generous the hell yeah cares. <laughs> yeah like I'm just like sitting there optimizing it's like the controls are taking up like 45 percent of the screen I'm sure you can change yeah. that but I'm just saying like it's not optimal I'm just imagining this blazing hot phone in my hand watching my battery <laughs> tick away and I'm just like you guys like I just stop just fucking stop <laughs> like I think it's a cool experiment if you want to try it I think the biggest thing that bothers uh, bothers me about it is the fact that they're treating it like this is established territory for them and they're just going no you have not breached experimental like you're you're just like oh we've got it running on the phone great now you need to optimize it for the phone you need to make it so that like the battery isn't getting like drained you know, it's like you, you need to make it so like it runs right because guy like they, they they show this curated footage. I'm just like I can't like I, I feel the heat of the phone in my hands when they're showing me this fucking Resident Evil Seven running on on the the latest iPhone. I'm just like I'm sure it functions, but it's not optimal, and that's not your core audience. So whatever. Dude, I I don't really have much mobile, to add to this because yeah, I'm mobile, entirely mobile in your camp. Is, yeah, it's it, mobile gaming is just it's not it's. I'm not asking you to give up. Candy Crush, <laughs> great for people forty and old and over, or fifty and over, <laughs> yeah. or whatever. But like, don't put a fucking AAA game that like you need to have a one thousand dollar computer or a five hundred dollar yeah. game console to run effectively on a mm -hmm. mobile device that's going to burn a hole through the Earth's crust yeah. once it gets up and running. I, I just like I, I look at it this way like like what I was gonna say is you don't need to give up I don't want you to give up but you need to stop marketing it like this is like the hotness this is an experiment all right mm. and you, it's barely functional it's like I remember when cloud gaming when when Stadia was like such a Ugh. huge deal and they're talking about how amazing it is like I I will always remember because I I got such a kick out of this when I edited this and they're talking about how amazing it is if you go to our discussion about the the the, the Stadia the pregame network discussion Google Stadia at the very end during the outro I have just like the the fucking the uh, the convention playing and they're playing and like you see the guy like kind of mashing the button and at first I'm sitting there like oh so it's like this is a video playing and he's just he's fucking around with the controller to make us look that way but if you look. There is like such a severe delay between him pressing a button and the action coming oh, out. Oh yeah, I saw that and, one. Yeah, it's yeah. like two seconds or something yeah. like that. That level of quality is like almost universal for mobile. Like there's always a catch or a or like a give somewhere and it's just not there and you're marketing it as mm. if it's like like you can't compete with the fucking switch. Don't talk to me like this is like <laughs> the next best thing. Whew. But at that event where they showed Resident Evil 7 on the phone, we'll, we'll stop talking about the, the mobile platform just to because this was something I gave a shit about. They showed two games. One was uh, something I can't pronounce, Path of the Goddess. You've probably heard about this. It's like a Capcom no, like, no, little action game. It looks kind of neat. It's a new IP from Capcom. I always get excited when they do new IPs because they, they, like back in the 90s, they always used to be the kind of company where they just, they always try something new and it tends to be novel at the very least or fun. And this kind of looks fun. It's like a it's like a basic kind of ARPG kind of thing. You might actually the, the okay. way the gameplay is structured, you might actually like it, and I think it's coming to Game Pass. So okay. I would actually I would actually I'll I'll find out more about it to or not more about it, but to formulate how it actually plays, and I'll send it your way. But the okay. big the big thing for me at this event, Dan, Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. Um, oh, here we go. So. A week beforehand, <laughs> there was a little teaser. They shadow dropped it. I was stunned. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Dead <laughs> Rising is back? I haven't... It's been eight years. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, okay, it's a remaster. And it's like the, the trailer starts and it's the same keeps music. Together, I'm, like, keeps okay. together. I'm like, okay, objective. wait, we're off, to, we're off to a good We're off to a good start. That's the same music. It's it's And then, like, they start talking. I'm just like, wait a minute. That voice is different. That's not right. And then <laughs> and then we start seeing the characters. I'm like, no, 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 no. That doesn't look right. No, what are you doing? <laughs> so, flash forward to this event and... I don't. The fucking I don't, meme of uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey from Interstellar sitting on the ship, just watching the TV of his kids, starting to laugh with joy, and then he just fucking cries hysterically. Yeah, fucking. So I've, I've, I've. It's been a roller coaster for me, Dan, because it, I was so disappointed because 
the tone in the teaser trailer, which is like 40 seconds, the tone where it's like, well, actually, before I before I get into it, let me ask you something, Dan. OK, Because you were actually you owned the first Dead Rising before I did. You, you, you yeah, that's right. Your, I did. At, yeah. At your house is the first time I played it. Um, oh, yeah. That, oh, my God. Thank you, by the way, because it's uh, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, <laughs> um, so when you think Dead Rising, what do you think? What comes to mind? Um, I think of like goofy Japanese humor, uh, like and killing zombies. Those are like the two things that, like, you know, gun to my head, <clears throat> list, you know, whatever. Okay. I I think okay. that's what comes to mind is like cheesy, just just cheese, uh, okay. but in a good way. Okay. And and uh, and photography. Gotcha. <laughs> that, that's what I wanted. It's actually funny. It's I'll I'll get into it more as we talk about. It, but that's it's funny that you said that. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, you were my brother. I love you. Um, <laughs> I love that, you too, buddy. That takeaway is what has been slowly strangling Dead Rising for for like 15 years. Um, okay. The problem. The problem so is. What do you think about when you think about Dead Rising? I think a very delicate survival horror game. Okay. Now, here's the thing. It is it is so so the deal with Dead Rising is it is it comes from a very experimental time when the 360 and the PlayStation 3 were new. Um it was it was it went through quite a few revisions and what ended up coming out of it is, you know, the whole goal it's like shit ton of zombies, we're going to fill this mall with a bunch of items, you can kill them in a lot of ways and we're going to add a light layer of humor. So your takeaway is what pretty much every everyone comes away with. And it's there. Don't get me well, wrong. You're that's my takeaway because I was never that into Dead Rising. Like when I realized yeah. it wasn't what I thought it was, I kind of checked out. Yeah. So so the whole the whole the whole problem is is like you, you know, it's fine if you check out. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But there are people that played the first Dead Rising or played the second Dead Rising and they played it just to kill zombies and then they put it down. Like the same way we talk about oh, shut your brain off, play the game and put it down. That's how that's how a lot of people mm -hmm. played it. It's not like I don't want to say it's not meant to be played that way because the fact that you can just go in there kill zombies and have fun is one of the great parts of Dead Rising but that's like scratching the surface uh, it's a very fragile formula with how the timer works and how the, how you're supposed to like interact with the different cases that come your way and how you you know navigate through the zombies and the story and the tone is like a B movie and it's very yeah it's 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 yeah. like it's like there are funny moments, but the universe is taking it extremely seriously. Like all the like it's grounded. <laughs> you like you okay. and I will find something in it funny. I honestly like that like you know, people will find it funny it's like, oh you can put it you can put a mask on the zombie, you can kill them a funny way. I find it hysterical when some when somebody says something absurd or silly or something that's not completely right, but they're taking it completely seriously. That's what Dead Rising is. Is it's okay. a grounded story or it's a it's a grounded universe where characters are taking it seriously but the situations they get into because of that and how they are handle it it, 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 it it are ridiculous <laughs> like i always say that the the very like you can tell what dead rising is about from the very first scene in the game when frank arrives at the mall because he jumps out of a helicopter lands on the roof <laughs> A photojournalist jumps out of an yes, helicopter and yes. lands on a roof. Lands on the roof, and right at the very right on the roof, the main bad guy is waiting for him, and he and he asks him, he like he just goes, he like he walks up to him, and the first question that the guy asks him is, "You came here by helicopter, didn't you?" Despite Frank jumping out of the helicopter ten <laughs> seconds before and landing in front of him, and I'm just like, perfect. <laughs> That's fucking perfect. There wasn't like Frank didn't turn around and go, no, I flew here with my own two arms or anything. He just he played it straight. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I came here by helicopter. Like that is like that tone is so perfect in how it's that's handled fucking, to me. Like that's a line out of the movie Airplane. Like honestly, yeah, it's, 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 it's like. <laughs> Airplane's a good example, not not because one to one, but like all the characters in Airplane, they're not acting like so they're in a serious. movie. Yeah, yeah. They they are serious, <laughs> like and that's that's what Dead Rising is. Now here's the problem: when Frank shows up in this new trailer, it's voiced by a completely different guy who's hamming it up a little bit. Uh, j lighthearted jazz music starts playing, 
And I'm just like, I'm sitting there going, whoever is in charge of this new remaster does not know what's going on with Dead Rising. And that's what hurt oh, 4 and 3 and 2, two to a lesser extent. Now, at this event, um, they spent a great deal of time saying how... And I'll be honest, when, when I saw the event, I was, I was it quelled my, my anger a little bit or, and my frustrations. Not, not, not once, I'm not sold on it, but it did. They, they spent a great deal of time talking about how they did not want to fuck with the original too much, right? It's okay. it's very much like even I could see it in the in the in the teaser, like the shaky cam that that Capcom was experimenting with a lot at the time. All of that data looked identical or near identical. A lot of the animations are exactly the same, just with a new coat of paint on top of it. And they they basically confirmed that it's it's the old files used wherever possible. Uh, with just a new uh, coat of paint with the RE engine. And basically, like, it's just all quality of life stuff. Like, you know, it, the timer's still there, but you can fast forward through it if you want to skip some shit. Uh, there's autosave, which I'm not a big fan of. I know some people won't play without it. Um, you can move while aiming. Uh, there's more heads-up display for, like, the, the durability of your weapons. And... A lot of things look really good. Some characters mm -hmm. look good. The mall looks good. The zombies look great. The zombies, they did one of the coolest things that I love when companies do this, is they took assets from the beta that never released and, and like, updated those assets and put them in the game. So now there's zombies cool. from, like, the beta builds and, like, the earliest, like, showings that we ever saw the game are now in, in this game. Uh, they also, like, added features, like, in the beta, we, like cop zombies were able to like shoot like you know not like actually take aim and shoot but like the guns are still in their hands so they're shooting and that was in the beta mm -hmm. and it didn't work now they can do that in this so there's a lot of cool cut content stuff but then it's like all most of the new voices suck like i think i think <laughs> it's because capcom hates unions and all the voice actors are unionized <laughs> um so like all, all the original voice actors aren't there anymore um the graphics don't look right for some of the characters like all the some of the, some of the chicks are ugly now. Some of the all the guys are like twenty years older for some bizarre reason, and I can only um, I, all of all of the problems I have with this new one, all this like the zaniness, the new tone, the the voice direction, all of that comes from people for the last nineteen years saying Dead Rising is the goofy zombie killing game, and I'm worried that they're going to affect the tone. So I guess. That's all I really have to say. At the end of the day, I, I think it looks like an 80... It, it looks like 80% of it is a really good remaster, and 20% of it is, like, bad in all the wrong ways. So Well, 80-20 isn't bad, but, like, if the 20% is, like, really, really bad, then it might... I mean, it could sting. <laughs> it, it's tough. Like, imagine, like, um, going back to your favorite game, Destiny. Um, like, let's say, you know... Uh, Lance Reddick, he died, you know, and they needed to replace the the, the voice actor. But let's say instead of voice, uh, instead of uh, like replacing him right away, uh, he in universe Zavala went away for one expansion, right? He was just not there. Okay. And then the expansion following, they teased like the return of Zavala, and like it was something they were hyping up. But then you 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 get to Zavala, right? And he looks completely different. He looks wrong, and he's voiced by me. Would you be happy but with that? Would you be happy <laughs> like that's that's like all the wrong things of Dead Rising and feel he's would feel like by me? Yeah, like you'd get a kick out of it probably because like you would hear my voice coming out of what is supposed to be like a very deep voiced black man, but it's it's <laughs> you just wouldn't you know it's it's not the same and it's like unnecessary. Like you'd still be playing Destiny, and enjoying it for however much you can for what it is but you obviously have this one glaring issue you know what just i mean determined to fucking enjoy myself <laughs> god damn it <laughs> exactly so we'll see what happens there there are some cool features i'm not they really want to get me to pre-order it because there's like you can customize the music that plays in the mall now and that's kind of neat but it's oh like, uh, they got you by the short and curlies exactly you know me i love <laughs> customizing shit like that like that is for whatever happens i will say this right now L adding additional mall music and letting you customize it like a playlist that's just in the background like that is one yeah, of these um, SSX had that exactly this is yeah. one of the smartest things available uh compared to ssx it's really just um like in-game music that they change ssx you can import yeah. your own stuff but it's it's the same yeah. idea 
Uh, we'll see. So we'll see what happens. I just wanted to rant about Dead Rising a little bit because I fucking love it. Oh, I got gotcha. you. You're entitled. And, uh, <laughs> hopefully, I want one of two things. I want to either be completely wrong about it, which I'm not going to be because some things, just, like unless they revise certain things about it, that's just the way it's going to launch. Or I want it to flop so I don't have to deal with this anymore because it's <laughs> Dead Rising. Like, I made the joke that people like in the community who like look at this and say like, oh, this is really good. This is really good are just mind broken because like the last thing mm. that came out was dead rising four and that was eight years ago and we all know how that oh went my god so it's yeah. like i think some people are just fucking mind broken man but not me yeah well, i'm just miserable not you <laughs> <laughs> and on on the misery note i think this would be an excellent place to close this bitch out <laughs> yeah that's fair enough uh don't forget, uh, Xbox 360 store is going to be closing at the end of this month. There's a lot of uh, deep oh, discounts. Wow. Yeah, so there, you'll still be able to download shit. You won't be able to buy shit anymore. And there are some ridiculous deals. Like I think I saw the Street Fighter 3 Online Edition for like two bucks, and I picked that up. But that's oh, that's wow. the only thing I'll, okay. I'll end on is because uh, you know if that's if anybody wanted some cheap 360 and Xbox titles, go get them all again. There you go. I might check that out actually. Yeah. Well, that was uh, what episode episode fourteen episode of 14. the pregame network podcast. That was that was that was a fun one. I enjoyed myself. Yeah, just to get back Thanks. in the groove after missing a week. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, well. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll be back next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye.